Whoa, look at this, look at this. There has got to be hundreds of garter snakes in this one breeding ball right here. When was the last time that you were surrounded by literally tens of thousands of snakes? Well, there's really only one place in the world that that can happen, and that's right here in South Central Manitoba at the famed Narciss Snake Dens. As I walk through here, there are garter snakes everywhere. There's one there, they're just all over the place. Look at this guy just sitting right here. There are just literally thousands of red-sided garter snakes around me right now. Four years ago, I was here for the first time. It was one of the most amazing places I've ever been, so I had to come back again this year to check out the Narciss Snake Dens, which again, is the largest gathering of snakes in the world. I'm Dave Kaufman, and these are my reptile adventures. All right, so we just arrived at Narciss Snake Dens, the actual wildlife management area that has made these garter snake dens famous. But last time we were up here, there was maybe three cars. There was nobody here. Look at it this time. This entire parking lot is full all the way back there, and there are people parked all the way up and down the street. Have you ever seen it this packed? I have not seen it this busy before, and I've been coming here for years. So. Apparently, all these people have seen my last video and wanted to come up here and see it for themselves. Yeah, I agree. Uh, yeah, right? Yeah? Eh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm an influencer. <laughs> 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 All right, so we're heading in. You know, this place is almost vacant exactly four years ago, right now, this time of year when I was here last time. But now there are, I was just talking to one of the rangers, there's been 5,000 people here just today. And it is amazing to see how many people are taking such an interest in these snakes. Because if the people take this kind of interest in these snakes, they're going to want to protect them and they're going to want to protect these dens. All right, so right over here is the first den, but look at this place. There are so many people here to see these garter snakes. This is almost like a zoo or a county fair. This is really awesome. These dens here have a lot of snakes, but you really can't get a really good idea for how many snakes are actually here. There's no snakes in a breeding ball here, but it's a really cool place to come and see a lot of snakes. All right, so we, we've got some really good suggestions here. Do not handle the mating ball. Pick up one snake at a time. Leave the female snakes alone, especially the big and fat ones. Well, I am offended for these snakes. That's discrimination. Uh, it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the vast majority of these garter snakes are these guys. They're red-sided garter snakes, which is a subspecies of the eastern garter snake. And you can see why they're called red-sided garter snakes. But there's also plains garter snakes here too, but they're much more rare. But this is just a little male, and this might be his first year breeding at his size. It takes about three years for these garter snakes to become sexually mature. And with females, their first year breeding, they don't have a lot of babies in their litters. They're live bearers, they don't lay eggs. And approximately 80% of their young don't survive their first winter. And if they do survive their first winter, it's estimated that about 50% are killed by crossing busy roads or by predators or by the elements. So the chances of a snake reaching 12 years old is less than one in 5,000. All right, so right over here is the final den site here at the Narciss Snake Dens, and this one is supposed to be the best one in the park, so. All right, in this one, you can see a couple of breeding balls down there, but I really like how they have this place fenced off because you know that if they didn't, people would go down there and harass the snakes. So it really is interesting to come here to Narcisse to see this phenomenon, to see these snakes in the springtime. But I'll tell you, a lot of people don't know that this isn't the only place where these snakes emerge and form breeding balls like this. There are a ton of places around this area where the snakes do this. So if you want to get really up close and personal with these garter snakes, you gotta leave Narcisse, make friends with the locals, find out who has these dens on their property, and ask permission to go out to their dens. Because in those spots, there are no fences, and you can get up close and personal with these snakes.
look at this. This is about, I would say about 200 garter snakes right in front of me right now. And this is what's called a breeding ball. And the males are all competing to breed with these few females that are in here. But when one of those females is receptive and sends out those pheromones that she's ready to breed, it sends all the males into a frenzy. And that's what you get in this breeding ball. I can see right there in front of me, there is a lot of males that are competing to breed with this one female. And as I'm sitting here, these snakes are crawling all over me. They just do not care that I am right here, this close to them. All right, Jeff LeClaire, your first time being at Narcissus, seeing these garter snakes. Is this the coolest thing you've ever seen? This is an amazing experience is what it is. It's, it's, it's an experience. You have to come out here and experience. You can see you know, photos and things like that. Here is a, there's, there's a female down here and boy, she is getting mobbed, yeah. just mobbed. It's so amazing to watch how these snakes interact with each, with each other at this particular time of the year, when normally a solitary animal for the rest of its season, you know, is, is hunting, doing its own thing. But during this peak time, the way that these guys interact with each other is just remarkable. It's just a mass of snakes, ladies and gentlemen. It's just a writhing mass of snakes. That's all you can describe it as, a writhing mass of yeah. awesomeness. Yeah, it is, and it is awesome. It is awesome. A remarkable experience. Zilla has everything you need for your reptile pets, from caging to lighting and everything in between. To see their entire catalog and find out where you can get Zilla products near you, visit ZillaRules.com. Look at this, I mean, there's at least 50 snakes right here. There's another one over here, excuse me, pardon me, buddy, coming through, excuse me, uh, guys, excuse me, pardon me, coming through, pardon me. But look at this, look at this breeding ball right here. There are literally hundreds of garter snakes in this mass right here. And, and not only that, but this is where the group is, but literally all around us, we are surrounded by maybe a couple hundred more snakes. There's more snakes over here. Look at this. They're coming right up to Jeff's foot. Mm -hmm. It's just incredible. Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah, this is something that seeing this on video just doesn't do it justice. You really have to be here to see this in person to really get the scope of how amazing this actually is. This is one of these places where you can actually hear the snakes. If you stop and close your eyes, right, you can hear the snakes around you. That's how many there are. This is incredible. And this only occurs right here and nowhere else on earth. And that makes this place all the more amazing. And just like a high school prom, there's so many of them interacting with each other right here. And in a month, they will completely ghost each other and never even acknowledge the other one's presence again until this fall when they return here again. So why does this phenomenon exist? Why do all of these snakes gather right here in this area every single fall and emerge every single spring and begin to breed. Why does this phenomenon exist? It all has to do with hibernation. This area around Manitoba, there's not a lot of places where these snakes can get deep enough below that frost line. It can get negative 50 degrees Celsius up here and therefore that frost line is really deep. And so these snakes need a place to where they can escape that frost line and survive the long winters up here in Manitoba. And so they find these winter dens that are subterranean caverns that are formed from limestone bedrock. And each one of these caverns is about the size of a small bedroom. And there can be from 10 to 20,000 snakes all hibernating together in these caverns. So it really has nothing to do with the snakes themselves. It has to do with the availability of hibernation dens that again can get them below that frost line so that they can survive the long cold Canadian winters up here. So how does this little male find a female with all that competition of all those other males? How does the snake tell the difference between a male 
and a female snake? Well, it all has to do with pheromones. Females will produce different pheromones than the males will. And especially when those females are receptive to breeding, those pheromones become very strong and the males go crazy for it. They go so crazy for it that, well, just take a look at what's happening here. If you think that something looks a little off about this, you're absolutely right. These males get so crazy that they're actually trying to breed with a poor female that's dead. She probably did not survive the winter. And these males are so breeding crazy right now that they haven't even stopped to notice that this female has passed on. But what's really interesting about these snakes is that little males like this can be actually pretty sneaky. Some males will mimic the female pheromones to lure all the rival males away from that one female. And then he will slip out of that ball and go back and breed with that female uncontested. But if you notice, these males aren't fighting with each other. They don't have a dominance hierarchy. They don't have a territorial setup like other animals do in a similar situation. This is a passive dance in this living carpet of snakes. And when you have a healthy number of snakes in this environment, it also means that the environment around here is also healthy. So I'm gonna take this guy right back to those breeding balls over there and let him get back to his competition. But guys, it was so amazing to be back up here at Narcissus to see this phenomenon once again. And real quick, I just wanna thank each one of my Patreon supporters. It's with your help that I can continue to do reptile education on this channel. If you'd like to become a Patreon supporter for as little as $3 a month, <laughs> You can get rattle on swag, early access to my videos, and so much more. That link is in the description. If you'd like to become a Patreon supporter, I would really appreciate it. And guys, as always, there's lots more reptile adventures coming up. So until the next reptile adventure, love the planet, feed your reptile obsession, and rattle on.